We have got two fantastic games coming up on Sunday for the AFC and the NFC Conference Championship games. We've got 49ers, Eagles, Bengals, Chiefs. We are here today to break down both those games and let you know where we are seeing value on the board over at FanDuel Sportsbook by bringing on Ryan Williams and picking his brain on these two games. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, we are on to the conference championships. Uh, it is quite sad to be here this deep in the season already, but how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. We got a uh, little, little boy in the background who's providing some ambience noise, and he, he's he's just excited. He's excited for championship weekend. Uh, he's he's ready to get after it. We've 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 talked through the teams. Uh, we know who we have the futures on. So he's just you know trying to trying to make his picks known, Jim. As you know, he's been on the heater um, to start yep. his uh, to start his early life. Yeah, week 18 was great for him. Uh, good wild card round, great divisional round for Trevor. And I think that I'm guessing, not to like put words in his mouth, but I'm guessing he's sad that he missed out on uh, Chiefs at, at plus 120 on the money line. I think that's probably where where the sadness comes from for Trevor. I, again, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I'm guessing it's probably there because they're back out to minus 108. So Trevor, I'm sorry, uh, but, yeah. you know, there's still ways around that. That's okay. We, we, we might be holding these, Jim. Sorry, right? He might we'll just be about worried that. about Uncle Jim and where he's coming in on the juice. Oh, Uncle Jim's plenty worried himself. Believe me. Believe me. <laughs> there is plenty of I sat here all day Monday and Tuesday thinking I was losing my mind. Wednesday felt a little bit more sane to deal with him a little bit more better. We're going to break down the movement in that game, break down Patrick Mahomes' ankle. We'll talk about uh, everything you need to know for conference championship weekend here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Because tomorrow, Brandon Gadula will be here to break down his thoughts on player props for the conference champions. We'll talk some props today, too, with Ryan here and get his uh, thoughts on those as well. But... Uh, more in-depth breakdown on that. Coming up tomorrow, we're also doing NBA, NHL, PGA shows here on Covering the Spread. Now the NFL is winding down and a lot of good stuff leading up to the Super Bowl the next couple of weeks as well. So make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts to Covering the Spread. And also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. As you know, the NFL playoffs are in full swing and the easiest way to get into the action is with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. New customers, join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay, all in an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So, football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose. Make every moment worth FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y And in Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. Now, we're going to dig into both these games here in just one second. But first, Ryan, this is the final time we get to talk to you before Super Bowl week. And we'll be very busy then with a lot of props, a lot of game breakdowns right. and stuff like that. So I want to take a, a quick step back and kind of get your thoughts on, on this, where I want to look back at 2022. And when you look at yourself as a better, what was your biggest lesson you learned this year that you're going to carry with you going into 2023? Yeah, I think there were a couple lessons for me. Um, we talked at the beginning of the season about how much 
invested I've been over the years into player props and with the lines, um, you know, the lines getting sharper from Vegas. And we've seen that through the course of this year. Um, it's been tough. But I think the biggest lesson for me to get ahead of those things was to get in on those early odds when they're released. So getting in on, on stuff from the week, as we discuss, um, when you're coming in on Sunday night and seeing those future lines, even the look ahead lines had been pretty huge for me going a week ahead um, and getting in on action that you felt pretty comfortable with, with things being able to change on a dime or even if you see something that happens in live action to be able to react has been huge and that's not something that i had usually done in the past so that's where you definitely find value and then you know jim i'm a big trends guy so i do like to follow the trends but i think not being a prisoner of all of the trends and really like taking time to get get invested into the eye test plus what the trends are telling you and really taking your taking your notes and taking that to bank and and doing it every week right this is a grind this is a season so you have to be consistent in what you're doing to follow along and that was those those were the two key things for me this year that I will carry on um, going forward yeah and I think the good thing is you kind of proved to yourself this year that you can do it based on like intuition eye test and stuff like that um, having an understanding of the game so you don't need to lean on those things um, you kind of I feel like at least I would hope this year has been a good confirmation for you that you know what you're talking about. So you can like, you know, lean on what you see, lean on what you know and stuff like that. So I feel like that's probably a good yeah. thing too, is kind of like confidence boost to be like, okay, I can do this based on this stuff. And, you know, you can still look at other stuff for sure. Uh, but having a read on the matchups, having a read on overall team strength, stuff like that. I think that, I think you, at least to me, you've proven this year that like you can do that. So um, I think that's a good confidence boost setting in <laughs> no, the uh, three. That's a big thing, Jim. I think from any type of what we talk about betting, we talk about DFS off, offline a lot of the times. And, and so much of that comes from just your own knowledge and what you're seeing and to be able to dissect di what, what am I trying to figure out uh, to take that information in for yourself, because right. a lot of the times people lean on the talking heads and everybody else to paint the picture for them. And we all have our own biases and biases that, that factor in um, to those notions. So at least if you're, if you're taking your, your own thoughts and putting that yeah. out to, you know, to display, I feel like you're, you're more, you're more apt to see yourself winning because of the, of the lines that you're willing to bet on. You're not taking yeah. somebody else's word that gospel. So that's been huge right. as well too. Exactly. And going back to you were talking about betting early, I think a big part of that is knowing when stuff is posted, which is kind of like a rhythm thing. It does vary book by book. I know FanDuel, when they post props, is typically later than a lot of other sports books. So if you are looking at prop markets, maybe you want to bet at the first book that posts props. Um, so knowing when those go up and attacking them when they do, seeing if there's value, if there's not pass, that's okay. Um, but kind of knowing when things go up. So knowing that on FanDuel, props typically on a, a regular week of posted, you know, midday Friday for the most part, um, it, which is a lot later than a lot of places. They're waiting on injury reports and stuff like that. So knowing when things go up, when things get posted, and taking advantage of that. Um, and that's true for everything. Like MLB money lines come out around 3 o'clock the day before. So if it's a 7 o'clock Wednesday game, you can start looking for money lines that at like 3 o'clock on Tuesday. Have you prepared in that regard? Strikeout props tend to go up around five or six in the morning. I'm not going to get up at five or six in the morning specifically to get those, but like knowing <laughs> when they're up so you can get in before stuff moves and it moves out of the value range. NASCAR odds on FanDuel will go up every Tuesday or every Monday after the injury or the, uh, the entry list comes out. Knowing that stuff is huge. Um, and I think that that could change next year. Like FanDuel may post their props earlier than they did this year, but just kind of knowing that and knowing when you can check those out to see if there is value is definitely a key thing. So I like both those takeaways a lot, Ryan, uh, for sure. Now, let's spin things forward and talk about these two conference championship thing, championship games, starting off with the NFC Championship. It is the 49ers at the Eagles. Right now, the Eagles are two and a half point favorites at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total in this game is 46 and a half. Let's start things off with a side here because the 49ers still undefeated with Brock Purdy, but going up against Jalen Hurts. And this Eagles defense is far and away the biggest test they have faced thus far. 
So do the 49ers have a shot to win this one or at least cover the two and a half? Or are you on the Eagles here? This is probably the toughest game for me to of the season. I, I feel mm-hmm. like this is one yeah. where I've just I've gone back and forth so much, Jim. I, I I just don't know. I I will say that I do have a future on 49ers and Chiefs um, rematch, so that can start to you can start to see where the lane is for me coming in on this and you're looking at it and you're the percent of that's 31 percent to 69 percent in the eagles favor the percent of the money right now 92 percent of the money on the eagles eight percent on the 49ers like that just feels wrong to me I, i i listen the the trend with the rookie quarterback you know going in on the on the road in the conference championship to get the super bowl like it's not looking good for brock purdy we get that but when you have the kyle shanahan regime under you know taking control of this thing his record in the playoffs speaks for itself like they they just are not getting blown out by teams. I get it. Yes, the Chiefs beat them by 11 in the Super Bowl, but they had control of that game for three quarters, and they just kind of got away from them. He has a system in place that really speaks volumes, and what they want to do is establish the run. And the Eagles have shown themselves over the past couple of weeks and pr- pretty much all season to a certain extent to be a pass funnel or run funnel defense, excuse me. So – you know, getting Christian McCaffrey involved. Hopefully, Eli Mitchell's healthy. We love seeing Debo Samuel getting more carries. This offense is so explosive to me that the line feels right. That's what really it comes down to from the line is probably not where the value is. The value is just saying that San Francisco keeps this a close game and is able to just get some magic in Philly going. And you take the you take the money line on them at plus one twenty or one twenty. 125, whatever it's moved to um, in the past couple of days. I just, I just feel I, Jalen Hurts has been incredible. Um, I, I do think to a certain extent that the rolling, how easy things have been for them, is it might come back to haunt them. In, in, and I could be eating my words, but that that's just how I feel. Could it come back to haunt them on Sunday? Be, because things have been so easy. And when you look at the defenses that this, t- this offense has gone against, really haven't been challenged all that much. They had two matchups against the Cowboys. They were able to handle that first one pretty handedly, but the second one was kind of a little, a little bit dicey there when they, when they were lost, when they lost that game. Now I know that Garner was the one who quarterbacked that, that team, not Jalen, but there, there have been times when Jalen, you know, if the offense is just not able to go, or this could be, you know, could be a long day for Miles Sanders and Jalen, who's coming off of an injury, and they make things, you know, a little bit worse for them, and they let the secondary kind of play things out. I, I actually love this game from an over perspective because of how explosive the two offenses are. So uh, we'll talk about the uh, the total in a second. Um, I agree with you. I also have the 49ers money line. I got a plus 122. It has moved against me. It's now plus 126. That does not feel great. But I still don't I don't really question what put me there because my the model that I've been my traditional model, the one that is back tested better recently is uh, has the 49ers favored, which feels stupid. Um, But the reason that it has them favored is because it leans heavily on passing efficiency and they are a very efficient passing offense. Now, the reason I have passing efficiency jacked up there is because I want to see if this team falls down can they claw their way back and, you know, make the game competitive? I don't know if Brock Purdy can do that because we haven't seen him do it yet. So I do think that that use the 49ers um, a bit. But even the other one, which doesn't do that, it, it, it operates in a different fashion. Even that one has the Eagles here by just a point. So that would imply that plus 126 on the opposing side is probably decent value. So I agree with you. I think the 49ers are the right side here. We've talked a lot about the weak schedule the 49ers have faced, but you alluded to it. Like the Eagles have faced the exact same thing. The Giants have a very bad defense. They face them in weeks uh, 18 and 20. Previous games with Jalen Hurts, um, Chicago, sorry, Ryan, really bad defense. Rough, yep. rough defense there. The Giants, uh, they did face Titans. They did really well in that game. Played well there. Uh, Green Bay's defense, nothing right home about. And then Indy, that was since that Washington loss on Monday Night Football. So I think the Eagles are a legitimately good team. They are not a product of their schedule. 
Um, they they earned what they've done, but we should give the co- the same caveats to them with schedules we give into the 49ers. And I think that the 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 talking around that is has focused on just one side of it, and that being the 49ers side, not enough on the Eagles side too. So I think that the yeah. 49ers money line is a way to bet those traditional markets. And and who who is the pressure on here, Jim? Like I think that's to me the the other underlying factor that people don't want to discuss is there's no there's no pressure on the 49ers in this game. Shanahan's yeah. been there before, but when Jimmy G went down, it was kind of just like we'll just you know we're, I think they would say that they're still going to you know do everything that they can to win, but they kind of were just like we're just going to get through the season. And now they've hit this, the stride with Brock and it's like, yeah, we we can probably do whatever and they're buying in. And if they lose this game, it's probably because they, you know, they, we didn't have our starter to start the season and we didn't have Jimmy G. We were on our third string quarterback and it just is what it is. And the lights were too big for this rookie. But if Sirianni and Jalen there with what the season meant to Philly and them being the number one seed and this being a home game and the way that the Philly crowd gets behind their teams, if they're not able to handle business at home, that's where the pressure therein lies with me um, for the team. So I feel like the 49ers can come in, play a little bit loose, do some things outside the box. And if things are struggling for Philly, like it could be a long home game for them because that crowd is definitely going to get into it and in their in their grill about uh, handling business. They did that in week 18. I think they booed him in week 18. It hurts his first game back. So yeah, they they are uh that's definitely happened. And like, yeah, third string quarterback, Mr. Relevant, they're playing with house money. Um, but I think that uh they're the right side here. Now you talked about the total. That's at 46 and a half right now, uh, minus 110 both ways. Sounds like you like the over. What puts you towards the over here? Yeah, the the over to me is just how how explosive these two offenses can be. Now they are, you know, they are like you said, the 49ers are a little bit efficient, and I do think that they'll try to establish, or establish the run, keep possessions down for the Eagles. So that, that'll that be an interesting thing to watch. But the Eagles, how fast-paced they are on offense, like they can probably help push the push the bill here if they're, we're getting explosive plays from A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, um, Jalen breaking off some runs. So I, I think that's what kind of excites me about the over in this game is that when you see two defense, two strong defenses on the other side, people tend to lean the hammer, the under. And we had a sweep on the unders in the divisional round. We saw the, the overs kind of hit in the wild card round. I think we do kind of get back to that here in championship uh, weekend with everything on the line. Uh, for these two teams, I think there's no no stops that no stones that are left unturned, and all right. stops are going to be broken down. So let's let's see some points be scored, and and I think this game is the one that lends itself to doing that. Yeah, uh, I had interest in the under here. Um, I have not taken it yet, uh, in part because part of the reason I was there was wind. Uh, the wind was nine miles per hour, which had. If it were 10 miles per hour, it would have been in my quote unquote like value range where I would have taken the under. It would have been a big enough value. It never got to not, it never got to 10. It, it actually went down to eight. So I'm going to keep an eye on the wind. If the wind does hit double digits, then I will probably take the under because I hate fun. Um, but I'm keeping a close <laughs> eye on that one there. Uh, so I'm going to, if the wind speed goes up a bit, I'll take the under, but I have not done so yet, but keeping a close eye on that. Okay. Typically we don't talk props here, but you know, We've got you. Let's let's pick your brain on some props too. Any props Ooh. you like in this game, Ryan? I do. Uh, Debo Samuel rushing prop. Uh, there are the running backs are a little bit banged up there. We I like how many rushes Debo saw. I believe it, at least when I got it, it was at twenty and a half. Um, I think it's still there. So I like getting the over on that. He's had some explosive runs um, throughout the playoffs. The other prop that I'm interested in is Jalen. Hurts anytime uh, interception um, oh. to not anytime to throw an interception uh, plus money on on that one. I do think that the San Francisco defense is pretty opportunistic, um, and they actually have done well um, against quarterbacks this year um, to to make some plays on. So I, I like getting an in, in interception there. I also had some interest in plus money on Jalen Hurts uh, over one and a half passing touchdowns. Um, I do think, it, again, if I'm taking the over, seeing some explosive things there, not really sold on what Miles Sanders is going to be. Miles Sanders and company are going to be able to do against this front seven of San Francisco. So I think it does lean on Jalen Hurts' shoulder and arm to be able to uh, put up some points for Philadelphia. 
The uh, number on that one over one and a half uh, touchdowns is plus 108. The uh, interception prop hurts to throw a pick is plus 102. Mentioned the Debo rushing yardage. That's 20 and a half uh, minus 114 on the over. And that one, I had interest in Miles Sanders props, but then they got they got torpedoed. Um, <laughs> the uh, rushing <laughs> attempts number was at 12 or 13. And it's now 14 and a half. Okay. It, it's plus 106 in the over, but that's a little... That's high. Um, he had 13 in the first half last that week, is which high. is why I was intrigued by her, by uh, Sanders. I think now, if I want to go that way, I just go to the Sanders rushing yardage over 50 and a half, minus 108. Have not taken it yet, um, but I think okay. that's the one that stood out to me was potentially going that way. Um, we've also seen the McCaffrey um, rushing plus receiving number justifiably come down 95 and a half. I want to see what his practice participation is on Friday. If he gets a full practice in Friday, then I'm going to look that way and see where that number is because it's not like it's a yeah. bruise on his calf um, or maybe cramping, which doesn't sound as bad. So if he gets in a full practice Friday, I will look at that number. It'll probably increase, but maybe not increase enough. So I think that's where I turn, but it's contingent on uh, practice for McCaffrey. Let's go now Love to it. the AFC championship game and talk about the Bengals and the chiefs. The Bengals are now currently as of this moment, one point favorites, who knows where it'll be in five minutes. Total is 47 and a half. And everything here, Ryan revolves around Patrick Mahomes. We've seen this market bounce all around the yard. Um, they were one and a half point favorites. The chiefs were, then they were, they were like for half a second. Uh, Femi Abebefe of, uh, Abebefe of Vison mentioned that they got to three for like half a second. And then, that got torched. So yeah. they were three point dogs for a second. They are no longer there. I want to get your thoughts on this. Do you have enough confidence in Patrick Mahomes ankle to back the chiefs in this spot? I do. I do. It, it, this to me is it, it, it just, it, he the, the Chiefs having the home playoff game here against the Bengals, like everything you would want to see, right? Like Patrick Mahomes against Joe Burrow. Um, these offenses they played before the record, you know, speaks for itself from Joe Burrow's side. Patrick Mahomes is not beating them. Patrick Mahomes is a Hall of Famer today. Like you could stop, he, he sure. would never play another down, and he would be a Hall of Famer based on what he's been able to accomplish at the quarterback position. Um, he's just incredible, and I think that 50% of Patrick Mahomes is is better than zero percent of Patrick Mahomes if the guy is out there and we saw it in the second half of last game like they're going to scheme ways for him to be able to excel and this is not an arm injury like he's still going to be able to sling the ball they're going to find ways to get Kelsey open the people who don't want you know Kelsey has been incredible um in the playoffs it's absolutely ridiculous his touchdown numbers the you know having a hundred yards in pretty much all but two games in Pat the Patrick Mahomes era um at home is just absolutely incredible they're they're going to find ways to get him the ball just like last week I mean he's he's unguardable um I, I just think that I I have all the respect in the world for Lou A and what he's been able to do with this Bengals defense but this is this is a different beast than what they just faced in buffalo um you know the weather the weather is going to be maybe a little bit similar but somewhat different from a cold standpoint snow standpoint it doesn't get like that in in all the time in arrowhead or what was arrowhead in kc um and i just you know it it doesn't matter weapons wise like who's out there they just are going to find ways to get involved i do think this is an interesting game for jerick mckinnon to get more involved here because i do think that there is going to be a lot more action um 10 yards and closer to the line of scrimmage so i do think they just find ways to scheme scheme ways to get guys open i'm interested to see what mccall harden McCall Hardman status is going to be for this game. Um, and I do think from the Bengals side of things, they were able to skirt last week. And the, I talked about this, the way that the Buffalo Bills play defense, like I didn't think the offensive line was going to be an issue. From Kansas City side of things, the offensive line might be an issue this week. They're going to try and get pressure on Joey B. They're going to try and make his life miserable and that could that could play a factor in in this game so I, for me it, it, it's kind of an even keel split which it, it has come to that when we're looking at the the plus one side of things um from from that standpoint of the chiefs but the offensive line is just as for the Bengals is just as much of an issue as the ankle injury is for Mahomes in my opinion and then if it's if you're just giving me a neutral pick I'm going to take Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs at home 
10 times out of 10, especially when they're a dog. This is a, this is a spot like three and under for Patrick Mahomes. This, he hasn't been in the spot very often. Um, but this is a spot that you would hammer every time. So, uh, they're kind of no longer underdogs because as we've been talking, this uh, money line has shifted um, to uh, the Chiefs minus 112. And what that means okay. is the past 24 hours for me have been one prolonged sigh of relief because on Monday, we talked about this in the first look, I took the Chiefs money line at minus 116. I felt like an idiot like 10 hours later. I was like, oh my gosh. Because the way that line moved implied to me that someone had info that he was going to sit because I couldn't concoct a reason the Chiefs should be two and a half point dogs, which is where they did eventually get to. And so I was like, okay, I missed, I didn't have information and I bet a bad number as a result of that because everything I looked at on Monday said he was probably going to play. He'll be less effective, but I had downgraded them in my numbers to account for that. And that's why I took the money line because I've, thought that minus 116 was a very fair number to get them at that time. So we're not quite back to minus 116. We're not quite back to where I'm getting, you know, um, positive CLV or even neutral CLV. It's still negative, but it's a lot less negative than it was. And so it's been a big sigh of relief that I didn't like, I didn't get the best number. That always sucks. That's super annoying. And it's disappointing to yep. like not get the best number. It's disappointing to misread the market thinking that, you know, with the word that was out there on Saturday night and Sunday, that Mahomes would be good to go diminished, but good to go. I thought that I had the right read on. It. I thought that minus minus one sixteen is the right number. And I felt very stupid for a very long time. I feel less stupid now. So I agree with you. I still think there's value in the chiefs at, at, uh, in the money line at minus one twelve right now, where it currently stands. Um, I think that, even a diminished Mahomes is a very good, very good football player. I think that the one thing that could change this is I currently have a downgrade for the Bengals um, for the offensive line injuries. Same as the ones I had last week where I had the Bengals money line. So it's not, um, it didn't not show value on them last week. They could get boosted if Alex Kappa or Jonah Williams turned to practice Thursday, which Zach Taylor left the door open for happening. So they could get a boost up. But right now I've got the Chiefs favored by two point nine in one of my models and 2.1 in the other so regardless it's probably not gonna be enough to boost them where the chiefs suddenly become not a value to be so i'm glad you're on the chiefs too because i felt very stupid for a full 48 hours there for a while and i feel much better right now what about the total 47 and a half right now uh over is minus 112 under is minus 108 what do you see on that in that market yeah, it, it it feels a little trappy to me. Um, I I I am interested if it kind of you know I think it only get boosted up actually. So if you do like the over, I think you would take it now um, because I could see this getting to 48, 40 and a half, 48 and a half at close. Um, but it, it still just kind of feels weird to me because this this does feel like one of those <laughs> one of those games where we expect offenses to be had you know at at all over the place um, like. Bengals and Bills from a week ago, um, and and we could just see see it disappointing from from the standpoint of you know a twenty seven to twenty victory um, that you, comes to fruition and and you're left you're left kind of holding it. If you are interested in the over, I would get in on it now. Um, but to me, it's kind of a, a stay away, and I just would rather take the Chiefs um, money line and spread uh, for where this game's going to be. I agree with your read on it wholeheartedly where I thought this, this total would increase as well. Um, Cause I have it at 48.5 in my numbers. So kind of okay. thought it might inch up. I think the reason it hasn't is because 47 is such a key number in, uh, in betting totals. So I think it's hanging around there. I would bet that it does get to 48, 48 and a half at some point. But um, so if you do want the over, I would take it now. I've not, cause it's not a ton of value and 47 is such a key number, uh, but I've got a 48.5. So at least some interest there. The wind is keeping that down a bit. Uh, it's nine miles per hour right now in Kansas city. So if that were to come down, that would help uh, boost that as well. But um, wind is at least something of a factor uh, for this one. Okay. What about props for you for Bengals cheese? Yeah, so props was an interesting one. Kelsey at one point was plus 110, plus 108 uh, to score an anytime touchdown. That had switched now to minus 105, which still feels very light. He should be a, a favorite to score a touchdown uh, here in this game, the favorite. Um, and Jamar Chase, uh, or 
is ahead of him. Um, and so I, I, I do like getting action on Kelsey there. Um, the other interesting one, I think, from the Bengals side is Samaje Pirine over two and a half receptions. Um, that was that plus money, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, plus 112, I believe, is what I got it at. It might have changed slightly, or I might be misremembering that number, but I do know it was right around there. Um, and Samaje Pirine has hit that number um, in two of the three matchups that um, he's played against this team. Now, one of those matchups um, was when actually, no. Yeah, well, one was without Joe Mixon. Um, the other one where he didn't hit uh, was when Joe Mixon was still playing, but he was used as a pass catcher. I think Joe Mixon had seven receptions in the first matchup between these two teams in the Joe Burrow era. Um, Joe Mixon has just not been utilized in in that regard. And if they do need to um, try and, and you know, util, utilize more pass catching help against this uh, front seven for Kansas City. I expect it to be some AJP Ryan out there. He looked good in the divisional round. So I do think that's a fun one to get. And then I think Tyler Boyd has showed up in these matchups a time or two before uh, him getting an anytime touchdown at uh, plus 300, three to one odds on, on Tyler Boyd there um, seems reasonable. Um, I think that can be interesting as well, too. They kind of utilize him from like the Hayden Hurst perspective of what you would expect from a tight end perspective when they get in the red zone. Uh, he's made some pl- some splash plays before. So I, I think there's some value in that. T. Higgins has just been he just hasn't seemed right over the past couple of games uh, since the Buffalo cancellation uh, game for, for, for whatever that's worth. I still think he's, he's a stud, um, but yeah. you have seen um, the other guys on this offense get a little bit more involved than him. Uh, maybe that changes uh, this week, but I think that that's where I'm uh, finding the value on the, on the, on the player props right now. My DFS lineups are very aware that T Higgins has not come through the past couple of weeks. It was, uh, it's been rough, rough. The, the Gabe T stacks last week were not, uh, were not the, not oh. the right move. Yeah. Uh, we've, yeah. we've made better moves for sure. The P Ryan one is, uh, over two and a half plus 116 right now. He ran more routes than Joe Mixon last week. So I think that's very fair. And with the way that this game could wind up going, um, I think that that makes a lot of sense. If they do fall behind, P. Ryan is very, very likely to hit that. He hit that last week in a positive game script. So there are multiple routes to P. Ryan cashing that. And I think that that does make sense. So I think that your read on that backfield is likely correct. Any final thoughts for you, Ryan, before we close up shop here for the uh, conference championship weekend? No, this is this is going to be a, f- a fun one, and can't wait to see who the two teams are going to be competing against it, uh, to hoist the Lombardi. So I just want to have fun with it. I think that we got two two supreme matchups here uh, for conference championship weekend, and I just can't wait to watch the action, Jim. And I'll be probably talking with you um, about that about that Chiefs game that we get on CBS on Sunday night. So um, I'll be uh, I'll be hitting your line, and we'll see if we have to suffer or celebrate together yep um it'll be suffering even if i win because i'll be very nervous the whole time i also have a bengals super bowl ticket so like i'm gonna be sad regardless but you you know technically the bengals won't pay more so i should probably root for them but like from a pride perspective i kind of want the chiefs to win because i don't want to feel like a dummy for my read on monday so i guess either way i'll be happy let's put it that way instead i can either look look smart or i can make potentially make money we'll see uh how it winds up playing out there you go That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. We are back once again tomorrow to break down player props for this weekend with Brandon Gadula. Make sure you check out Ryan Williams on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. We'll have Ryan back on during Super Bowl week to break down that game, break down props. Uh, Ryan, looking forward to it. Uh, Good luck to you this weekend. We'll talk to you again soon. Sounds good, Jim. Can't wait. Good luck, everybody. All righty. Again, check out Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Back once again tomorrow to talk some player props. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 